Hey, this is Mark with Eigen Designs and welcome back to my channel. I get a lot of questions from my viewers about how I use my CNC. And in summary, I like to pair simple accessories that you can find off Amazon with the woodworking products that I make. I think it makes for a really attractive overall product. So in today's video, I'm going to go over five of those ideas. But if you want to hop straight into carving, I'll have links to my plans in the description below. Let's go. The first thing I'll be making is an iPad holder with some common kitchen conversions engraved in the back of it. It's becoming more common for people to use their iPad as their recipe book, and this design is both CNC friendly and allows the power cable to be easily inserted at the bottom without interfering. But before we get into the design, let's start off by getting some stock ready for carving. I'll be thickness planing all of my stock to 3 quarters of an inch since that's what all of my CNC carving designs call for. With the stock done, let me take a minute to talk about the design. So the iPad holder consists of two different parts, an upper part and a lower part. To carve this, there'll be two different tool paths, one to contour cut out the upper and lower piece, and then a second engraving tool path to actually cut the kitchen conversions that are gonna be on the upper part of the iPad holder. The total carving time for both of these tool paths together is about 11 minutes. Now I'm going to carve this from a single piece of walnut, but you could do a panel glue up if you wanted to use some scraps to create this design. Now I'm only going to show this once in this video, but anytime that I've got a tool path that cuts all the way through the material, I do not use my T-Track clamps on my spoil board. I use a little bit of painter's tape and some CA glue and activator between the two and have that adhere the piece that I'm working on to the spoil board. This allows your CNC router bit to go all the way through the material and not risk going through one of your clamps. I also zero my bit on the lower left hand corner of the stock. You don't have to do it this way, but that's how I design all my designs and that's how I always execute my work so I'm consistent. Now with everything set up, it's time to let the CNC do its thing. While that's carving, I want to share my philosophy towards these types of CNC projects. You'll notice that all of these designs are pretty hands-free, so I'm using a single piece of stock as opposed to having to deal with panel glue-ups. And then the tool paths do 99% of the work, and there's just minimal sanding and finishing on the back end. I, I design them this way so that you can uh, batch these out in high numbers and have minimal time that you spend personally on any one particular thing. You kind of have to shift your mindset a little bit when you're dealing with these CNC projects because these are designed to be uh, mass produced in quantity and you can't spend a whole lot of time on any one particular thing. So in that same light, I'm going to be finishing this with mineral oil as opposed to something like lacquer or polyurethane, but you can choose the finish of your choice here. So once the finish has a chance to dry, you're left with an iPad holder that's functional and unique. Total time on each individual one is probably in the 15 to 20 minute range, which includes the 11 minutes of carving. So you can get these done pretty quickly. And it's a nice gift or present for someone who does a lot of cooking in the kitchen and might get some use out of it. The next thing we'll be making is a walnut serving platter with three white dishes. I've got links to where these can be found on Amazon, but they're about a dollar and a half a piece, and it really brings together this particular platter. So very quickly, just kind of giving an overview of the design, there's going to be multiple compartments around the outside where you can put chips and vegetables, that kind of stuff. And then I'll be hollowing out the center section where each of the white dishes is going to go. I'll then do a contour cutout around the entire platter to cut out the final shape. So getting right into the carving, I start out with a three quarter inch bowl bit. The particular one I'm using here is from Whiteside and the total carve time was about 16 minutes. It's a very large bit that's run at pretty high RPM. So you have to take things a little bit slowly in terms of how big of a depth of cut you take. I then use a quarter inch end mill to do the contour cutout to actually cut the final shape of the platter. Once all the carving was done, I did some light sanding at 120 grit. And 
after I finished this project, I ended up going on Amazon and buying some two inch disc sanders that are meant to be used with your drill. And that really helped clear out the inside of each of the compartments uh, and speed up some of this hand sanding. I think it's about $15 on Amazon. So it's a pretty worthwhile investment if you're gonna be doing a lot of this type of work. After putting a quarter inch round over on the edges, I then came back and etched out a channel for the bottom side of the white dishes to sit inside of each one of these pockets. I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Once again, I just finished with a little bit of mineral oil. If you're gonna be doing a large number of these, it might be worth filling up a plastic tub full of mineral oil and submerging as opposed to doing what I'm doing here and wiping it on because that would greatly increase the efficiency of the finishing process if you had enough of these to warrant that use of the mineral oil. And the final product is this large serving tray with these beautiful white dishes. And this is again made from a single piece of stock that was about eight inches by 15 inches and total time was about 25 minutes, including the upfront carving time. This next one is a circular serving platter, similar to the design before, but with a different twist on it. So there's a single central dish in the middle surrounded by four individual compartments around the outside. And I'll be using some Pal Rosa to make this, which is a really beautiful orange reddish wood that comes from South America, I believe. Now, because the required stock is 10 inches by 10 inches, I do have to do a panel glue up on this one. So I decided to do two carves next to each other to make the most efficient use out of my CNC time. Once the panel was dry, I took the optional step of running it through my drum sander just to remove any glue residue that was remaining on the surface. There are other ways to remove glue, but I find this to be the most time efficient. Once that was done, it was then time to let the CNC do its thing. Again, I elected to use an eighth inch roundover on the bottom side just to make it soft to the touch. Now let's go back to the groove that we cut for the white dish in the previous design. I first noticed it whenever I finished this circular pattern and this central dish did not sit very well inside that central area. So I got out a pair of digital calipers and I decided to take an additional tool path and carve a channel to allow the bottom of the white dish to recess perfectly inside the center of that pocket so that it wouldn't move around whenever it was being moved or people were dipping, you know, chips and other things into it. Once the channel was cut, I put the dish inside and tried to shake it around. Didn't see any movement. And whenever I grabbed the top of the dish, I didn't feel any movement. This type of attention to detail really bumps up the quality of your projects to that next level. Once again, I decided to finish with mineral oil, given that it's an easy finish to apply and it's food safe. After the finish dried, you can see that this final circular platter is very attractive. It's got some vibrant colors and it's a good size for a small dinner party or a family gathering of some kind. And it took about 18 to 20 minutes to make. Next up, I'm gonna be making a craft beer flight that is designed to work with these glasses that I got from Amazon. I'm gonna skip the design part and just hop straight into the carving. And we're gonna start off with a 90 degree engraving bit that is going to outline numbers one through four underneath each of the beer glasses so you can identify which glass is which. And then I've got some text at the top. This particular board was made for Brad, so it says Brad's Beer Flight. But on the plans on the website, it'll just say Beer Flight at the top. Next up, it's time to do the actual cup cutout that's designed to accommodate the glasses that were pictured before, followed by a contour cutout so the whole item comes out as one. And while I'm applying an eighth inch roundover to this board, I will say that if you're interested in those glasses, I've got an Amazon link down below. I had to go through a few different versions to find high quality glass that was actually glass, not plastic. So I have a link to those if you want to make this yourself. And after applying a little bit of finish, this project is done. 
From start to finish, it only took about 15 minutes for this particular board because there's not a lot of carving to it, but there's certainly a lot of room for customization if you wanted there to be. Whenever you pair it with the beer glasses, it looks like a really nice complete gift when paired together and definitely something that can show off your CNC skills. The last project on my list is gonna be a Lazy Susan. Now this is gonna be a very simple CNC project, but for those out there making these with bandsaws or other means, the CNC is a much better application for this particular type of project. Now, it does have a larger footprint, so I'm gonna to have to do a panel glue to make this happen. And I'm gonna use some leftover pine that I have in my garage, left over from a previous project. Once the panel is dry, I then run it through my drum sander a few times just to remove that top layer of glue before going to the CNC. Now let me take a minute to talk about the design because this one is simple enough that I didn't actually put the plans linked in the description below, but it's just two concentric circles. The outer circle is going to be the contour cutout, and then the inner circle is just going to be, think about it like a juice groove on a cutting board, just to provide a little bit of a design feature and an area for your fingers to grip whenever you're using the Lazy Susan. Now, as you can see, this Lazy Susan is quite small. It's only 14 inches in diameter, but you could do it much bigger depending on the footprint of your CNC. Next, I take some 120 grit sandpaper and just do a once over on the top and bottom of the Lazy Susan. And then I use my palm router to apply a chamfered edge around the top. To finish a project like this, you could certainly apply a stain and then a top coat like a lacquer or a polyurethane. The client that I'm making this for specifically requested it to be color matched to their table and wanted it painted gray. So that's what I'm doing here. But there's a lot of creative options you have in terms of finishing on a project like this. The last step in this process is to center the hardware on the underside of the Lazy Susan and then secure it in place using some wood screws. This is a great beginner CNC project and there's a lot of room for customization if you wanted to add family names, quotes, monograms, you name it. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something and got some value from it. If you did, consider subscribing because I got more great content coming, and I'll see you on the next one.